Welcome everybody, Marvin LeBlanc. We're going to cover in just a few short minutes. Hey, 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 Etoile is in the house. Etoile Falante. Hasta la vista, baby. Tonight we're covering confessions of a professional Hall of Fame speaker. Hello, Pete's 2006. Wow, 2006 was an important year for me, Pete's. Uh, that was the year that I got back on my feet after becoming homeless. That'll be a story for another day, I'm sure. Welcome, everybody. Uh, can everybody hear me? Somebody give me a little entry and say yes. Jay Buck's in the house. All right. Gif Ed, Ed XO. All right, Etoile Falante, what a name, Etoile Falante. Okay, we're going to have fun because right now it's uh, way past most people's bedtimes. If you're in Central Standard Time, better known as Gumbo Time. Yes, I'm a South Louisiana Cajun, and now that I'm 53 years old, I just recently realized that I might have an accent. Dog Dare is in the house. Welcome, Dog Dare. Uh, feel free to um, share, uh, hitting that little Periscope man over there on that right. Uh, and also for those of you that are just joining us on the replay at catch.me forward slash Marvin LeBlanc, welcome. Uh, your hearts at uh, catch.me also uh, are counted for the Periscope analytics. B. Jacobs is in the house. Welcome, B. Jacobs. Again, I am Marvin LeBlanc. Uh, my intro uh, certainly can be found at the Periscope site. You can certainly Google Marvin LeBlanc. And uh, when you Google Marvin LeBlanc, you will be introduced into my world. Walk E051 is in the house. What states are you guys in? Um, what states or other countries that you might be in, please share. Very good. Okay, so let me go ahead and get started. Good old Louisiana. Uh, I'm actually a South Louisiana Cajun boy. However, tonight I am broadcasting uh, from Alabama. Uh, it's been a great day. I am a uh, Amazon Kindle best-selling author of a book called Come Hell or High Water. Life Lessons from Hurricane Katrina, and so uh, that was a pivotal moment in my life. Uh, today, hello Amanda, uh, today we're going to talk about confessions of a professional Hall of Fame speaker. Thank you for your hearts, Amanda. And uh, I want to start with a story, and that word story, uh, you might want to uh, find a pen pencil and paper uh, and write this down if you can. So, um, as, as a result of Katrina, never once did I even think uh, that I'd ever write a, uh, a best-selling book, uh, and definitely it wouldn't have been on a subject like Hurricane Katrina and um, the atrocities that it ha I had an opportunity to experience. Uh, but because of the Katrina experience, um, and after lots of nudging from several people that thought that I had a story that needed to go out to the masses, I went to a National Speakers Association uh, convention. I can't really recall what time it is um, or what uh, year it was because um, I have some um, blind spots in my memories. Uh, from uh, 2005 uh, and, the, and the 10 years that have just followed. And so uh, I am at a huge convention center uh, along with Fred Reggie. And if somebody reminds me, I'll also tell a Fred Reggie story uh, before we get off tonight. But uh, what, end up, what ends up happening is Fred Reggie, a six foot four, um, very talented, uh, excellent, eloquent speaker. Hello, Cord. Thanks for being in the house. Cord 1-2. Corsica is in the house. 
Very good. Welcome to the broadcast. Tonight we're talking about confessions of a professional Hall of, Hall of Fame speaker. And so Fred Reggie and I are um, in a uh, common area at the convention. And as fate would have it, there's a lady uh, that was there, a Hall of Fame certified speaking professional named Glenna Salisbury. Glenna Salisbury. And that particular night, spontaneously, uh, at the last minute, without any of us three having plans, uh, we invited her to dinner. Actually, Fred invited her to dinner, and I was there with Fred. And that night was a life-defining moment for me, uh, because uh, over dinner with her, uh, I learned many things and became comfortable with unanswered questions. And so my purpose tonight is to pay it forward and also possibly encourage you uh, to get out of your comfort zone and follow your dreams because um, certainly that happened that night uh, with Glenna. Some of the notes that I took is what I'm going to share with you. So you weren't there that night and you weren't there through the many experiences when Glenna took me under her wing. Uh, but you get tonight. Hello, the laughter Revo is in the house. I think her name is Carla. Uh, but you get an opportunity to take notes tonight and um, and feel some of that energy and and get some of these lessons. One of the first things that she told me is it's about you being you, not you being a speaker. So tonight I'm unveiling and kind of pulling the curtain down on what, what it's like to be a professional speaker uh, as I am along with Glenna uh, uh, and we're both members of the National Speakers Association. Uh, Early on in my career, I was so concerned. The Bears is in the house. I was so concerned with um, how I stood, how I held my arms and my hands. And certainly you can get that from a speech class. And I strongly encourage anybody, high school, college, that has an opportunity to take a speech class, do so. Uh, however, I probably would recommend you to take an acting class um, just as much. Um, this is a question that she asked that I'd like you to write down, and you too, sweet daddy Jimmy, uh, in, in the event that you're trying to pursue a dream and you're a little lost. Your dream could be a speaker, your dream could be an author, um, you, you, your dreams could be many things. Uh, you might be leaving a career. I had an opportunity recently to influence a lady who did her very first um, Periscope broadcast today, and I am so excited for her. I am so proud of her because although she's a retired teacher, imagine that, a retired teacher, and she was fearful of Periscope. Uh, personally, I, I can imagine that because uh, I've spoken in front of as much as maybe three to 4,000 people, uh, and quite frankly, uh, in many ways, that is easier than me doing a, spare, a periscope session. Um, actually, to have to look at myself, uh, back at myself, is um, is a challenge that I'm still in, still having. Uh, but this woman, Glenna Salisbury, assisted me um, in, uh, in 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 looking and trying to find what my truth is. Uh, so I'm going to tell you that uh, the most important thing as a speaker, a writer, or a communicator is to be emotionally connected. Be emotionally connected. Ask yourself the question, what are the truths that drive my life and causes me to lead my life in a meaningful way? What are you doing right now? to lead your life in a meaningful way. Now, there are so many people out there with what I call self-limiting beliefs. And what I'm talking about there is they they would think, no different than I, by the way, 
Um, so I'm, I'm not exempt. Uh, something just came in my mind. Uh, for two years, a woman got in my face about writing this book, and I thought she was just crazy as hell. Who would want to read a book from a Cajun boy with a uh, heavy accent and 20% of his tongue removed from two tongue surgeries? Um, but I was wrong, uh, and she stayed on me. Um, so your life has incidences and events in them, in your life, that are applicable to many other people. Um, what we need to do, remember what, uh, what was in Proverbs 16, verse 9, uh, all of our steps pretty much are already preordained, meaning that you are right where you are for a reason and a purpose. And I'm saying, really? Man, Hurricane Katrina? What kind of reason and purpose is this about? I had many, many confusing nights, countless nights of watching my customers with tears. And boy, it was a really confusing time. But what I'm trying to encourage you to do tonight is, is embrace your consciousness tonight before you go to bed on how you can set your spirit free. Um, we are all spiritual beings right now having a physical experience. Okay, So we need to set our spirits free and we need to help others set their spirit free. Okay, Do y'all feel that? Can you give me some hearts on that if you can understand that? What is your purpose in life? We have moments in our lives that can actually be transformational. Who, when, where, and what uh, did you learn from those experiences? Um, don't try to be a speaker. Uh, just be who you are. Uh, so I have many people, I have a great idea for you. Uh, I am not suggesting that you should follow way too many people's blog. You should follow people that you believe in their core values. Um, they share good love with you. They are collaborators and that they're going in the same direction as you. However, while you want to emulate them, you only want to emulate them in the ways that they can help you be the best person that you are. So there, there's no need for two Marvins in the world, okay? Uh, I only can do the best that I can with the resources and the knowledge and the and the heart that I have. Hello, welcome, Rima. So, so to you, you you, you can look at other people, uh, but I would caution you to spend too much time uh, trying to compare yourself to others. What you want to do is compare yourself to your best self. And we want to stay away from lining up a list of excuses on why you are not performing and learning and doing and seeing and experiencing more in your life. Okay, let's put away the excuses and let's step up. Uh, the other thing, this sounds cliche, just show up. Show up and care about people. The number one rule, I'm going through a, a, a three-part three series called um, um, How to Have a Lifetime of Referrals. And the number one rule in how to have a lifetime of referrals is to show up, and more specifically, to show up on time. Uh, because showing up shows character, and caring shows the ultimate. We are all catalysts for transformation. Now we share a lot of information, but information without implementation is ineffective. So we want to use the information so that we can move towards implementation and action. Now here's a secret that I'm uncovering the veil of what a Hall of Fame professional speaker shared with me. Constantly keep a list of stories. Well, Marvin, I'm not a good storyteller. Nope, you didn't, you didn't hear me. Constantly keep a list of stories. Thank you for the hearts. 
And please uh, remember to share by hitting the Periscope Man. Share with others. Uh, Lucy Lou is in the house. Share, love that name. Share with others, uh, all of your followers, to follow this because this is going to be some pretty good content from a Hall of Fame speaker. She strongly suggests for you to constantly keep a list of your stories of every variety. It could be humor stories. It could be sad stories. It could be stories on leadership. If you're a yoga, Alejandra is in the house. I call her, I, I nicknamed her Curl Friend because her last name is Curl. Um, so what is your list of stories? Um, I actually have... A notebook that I can't reach. Oh yes, I can. And this notebook, uh, I have literally just taped on there my list of 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 categories of places that I share stories. So the stories could be on marketing. Uh, it could be on um, uh, let's see, questions, uh, quotes. I have a uh, thing on, on, on stories on nutrition, uh, referrals and how to network, um, social media. Uh, it could be stories on, um, I have an interesting one called scrapbook memories so that uh, when you're old and in your chair, uh, sometimes I'll throw s different things into a folder. And I have a first cousin, actually two first cousins, that love to scrapbook. And they've done some wonderful things. And when they take all those scraps and they put it in a scrapbook, it is unbelievably memorable when someone has a retirement party or or having a birthday and then they share one of those scrapbooks. Um, I also have down here team school, uh, technology, uh, so time and organization. Um, and then also I have um, uh, a particular uh, folder that's called the humor, humor journal. Humor. Now, uh, here's what I want to share with you. I could possibly be the world's worst joke teller. I can't remember a joke. Um, for some reason, the punchline, it just, I'm just not a joke teller. And I, I know two Cajun men, and this is actually not a joke, uh, these two Cajun men uh, work with the same uh, insurance and financial firm that I do. And these two Cajun men, uh, one is no longer with us, literally could tell jokes for six hours straight and never hear the same joke twice. Hello, Ken. Welcome. Uh, and they they were unbelievable. Okay, they could just go on and on and tell jokes. Uh, Etoile Falante is in the house, and she says, "Yeah, those those kind of people would tell Boudreaux and Thibodeau jokes." Man, yes, yeah, pass a good time. They would tell those Boudreaux and Thibodeau jokes. And Ken, uh, hello, Ken. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, so uh, she strongly suggests constantly keep a list of your stories. Uh, the other thing is, don't assume that you're going to remember the story at a later time. Uh, it just it just vanishes. Uh, when I go to bed at night, I'll keep a pen and paper right next to me uh, because I never know when a good idea is going to come up um, or a story that I need to write down. And um, I got to a point where sometimes I wouldn't even open up my eyes. I would just write on the notebook uh, and it's all scribbly but at least I can remember it the next morning because lots of times you actually would forget it before the the dawn of the next day um, so let me stop for a second and tell you something that just recently happened that same guy Fred Reggie and I Fred's from Lafayette Louisiana I'm a little Cajun boy from uh, Ascension Parish uh, I actually lie to people and tell people I'm from Gonzales because I'm actually from Duplessis, and Duplessis is so small, it really should just be called an area. Okay, there was no, um, maybe, I don't even know for sure if we even had stop signs back when I was growing up there. Certainly, we didn't have concrete uh, streets, um, and uh, you got your mail at a post, a post office box. But this is a humor story that happened. Fred and I reached recently uh, were on our way to Washington, D.C. 
to a National Speakers Association convention, and we were all excited and talking. And Fred, as I said, is six foot four, and so uh, he wanted to sit in the uh, first row uh, at Southwest. And uh, uh, I told him, Fred, I'll be glad to, but because I'm a short Cajun boy, to be honest with you, I can take a backpack and put it under my seat in Southwest um, and and still have room for my legs. Okay, so it wasn't that important to me uh, to sit on the first row, but it was to him. So I was sitting up there and I looked over to the right uh, and I, I saw this lady. <clears throat> she looked familiar. Uh, I thought she was actually going to our conference, but she wasn't. Um, and so I looked and I said, oh, look, she must be going to our conference because she's reading a book. And the title of the book is Storytelling. Well, uh, I didn't have glasses on at all. Actually, these are terrible old glasses because I, I lost the last pair. Um, and I said, yeah, she's reading a book called Storytelling. And then Fred looks at me and says, no, she's not. I said, oh, yeah, Fred, look, she's got a book uh, on storytelling. He said, Mormon, put your glasses on. She's reading a book written by Tori Spelling. Not storytelling, but Tori Spelling. Oh, my God. It was hilarious um, because uh, I just knew I was right that she was reading a book about storytelling. And so uh, I uh, went two or three days where I didn't write it down. And lo and behold, I, I hurried up and, and wrote it down because uh, as much as I can remember it now, as time would go on, I would not remember it. So uh, I'm not suggesting to tell jokes unless you're really good at it. I am suggesting uh, that I tell humorous stories about myself. I have a top ten most stupid things I've done in my life, and as fate would have it, I continue to come up with more stupid things that I do every single year. Uh, well, they they have actually become humorous. So, what about you uh, in the area of, of humor? Uh, what is it that you could share that would be meaningful to other people watching your Periscope podcast? That's what I'd like you to think about over the weekend, if you will. Thank you so much for the hearts. Uh, what is it that you're passionate about is your next question. What are you passionate about? What would you talk about or share about or do even if you didn't get paid? Search your soul for that because right in that area, inside you lies greatness. But it doesn't belong inside you. It belongs out in the world. You need to share your spirit. You need to collaborate. You may or may not have ever heard of Perry10K.com. P-E-R-I, the number one zero, K.com, forward slash join. But Perry10K.com is a platform on Periscope uh, that I have been uh, honored to be selected as a member of. And what it is, it's a group of speakers and dreamers and authors and positive people that support each other and share uh, with other people uh, things like uh, edifying a fellow Perry 10K member. An example is Michael Sinquino, C-I-N-Q-U-I-N-O, Michael Sinquino. He may be actually on uh, now uh, uh, called uh, Periscope Coach. And I really have learned a whole lot from Michael Sinquino. Well, when I tell you to follow somebody like that, I'm actually edifying that person, which is essentially the opposite of what happens with gossip. Edification is when you talk positively about someone when they are not present. Uh, present. Uh, 
and I see gossip as what you cover negatively about somebody when they're not present. So, in summary, what I want to tell you is you are a catalyst for transformation. You do have relevant stories. Uh, you need to discover what your passion is that you would talk to, uh, e uh, to anyone even if you were not paid. Uh, keep your alignment and you will align with others in the right way. Now, if you had a t-shirt that described your life's motto, for instance, um, uh, my spouse has a t-shirt and the name of it is, uh, it says on it, run hard, live easy. So you might have seen that t-shirt before, run hard, live easy. Um, I was once at a study group in Maine and one of my friends actually bought this in a merchandise uh, store. I wasn't there at the time. Uh, and on the shirt it says, uh, don't grow up, it's a trap. Um, and so I, I have that shirt. It's a shirt I use lounging around the house. Don't grow up, it's a trap. Les Brown, a famous professional speaker, um, if he was to die, he may act by now have a t-shirt that says it, but his shirt would say, live full, die empty. Your goal in life on the last dying breath is having all of your enthusiasm used up and that all of your spirit and your energy in this world was transformed into uh, the service of other people. The true meaning of life is servanthood and being other-centered. And so what about Marvin? Well, what would my t-shirt say, Marvin? Well, my t-shirt would probably say, make marvelous happen. Marvelous what? Marvelous experiences, marvelous memories. Uh, make marvelous happen in the lives of other people. Uh, another question that, uh, that, that Glenna shared with me was, um, what fills your heart that just... Ah, when you do it, maybe it's working with uh, underprivileged youth. Uh, I've been involved with the Kiwanis International Organization for um, decades, not as much lately because of my writings and my teachings and running a business. But what fills your heart with um, satisfaction? Uh, uh, identify what that is uh, so that you can continue to make a difference and live with significance. Uh, don't chase success. Uh, chase being significant. Uh, that's what my message would be for you tonight. So uh, I leave you with thinking about if you were doing a t-shirt. I leave you with Google Marvin LeBlanc. Uh, if you go to MarvinLeBlanc.com forward slash blog, what you'll have is scrumping through life one blessing at a time. There you go, Scrumps to, delicious. Um, there's 200 free blogs. Free. Let me say it again. Did you hear that? Free blogs. A price everybody can afford. If you go to MarvinLeBlanc.com forward slash blog. Uh, and subscribe. You're not going to get pounded with a bunch of information. You usually will get maybe one blog a month. Um, but there's 26 or 27 categories on all kind of different subjects. So if you're having a not so good day, there's something there that you can read that will be there for you as a pick, pick me up. So I am Marvin LeBlanc. Check out those resources. I really appreciate your time tonight. Uh, and in closing, as always, I say to you, I wish you peace, I wish you love, and I wish you gumbo. Good night, everybody.